Hi, welcome back to Yellow Brick Road's parent videos. So today's lesson can actually be used for the pandemic and it's probably really helpful right now, but it's also a skill that's just helpful in life for your kids and it's teaching kids to play independently. We have four steps to help your children play independently, but they are gonna take a minute. So just be patient with that. So the first step is that you want to create a defined space for your child to be able to play independently in. So for your older children, this could maybe be like in their bedroom or in the family room or maybe even in the basement, depending on their age. For your younger ones, it's probably going to be in the same room as you, but more defined space. So maybe a little table right next to the table that you might be working at, but a very defined space for them, maybe a rug, table, um, a pillow, a little shelf for their toys to be on, something like that. Right, just something that they know it's their area, this is where this certain thing happens. And that's the second step, is having toys that are open-ended. So when you're teaching children to play independently, you're gonna wanna start with things that don't have a set purpose, excuse me. And some examples of that are blocks, so they can build those, it can be two-person play, it can be parallel play, it can be independent play. Magnetiles, I wish I would've invented magnetiles. <laughs> um, they're the, a really cool toy, if you don't have them, check them out. Play-Doh is one if you're okay with it, but remember, depending on the age of your child and where their independent space is, so if their independent space is a rug, I don't recommend Play-Doh, um, colors and um, paper. One trick to that though is that it's almost better to have a whiteboard or something they can erase because a lot of times with kids, depending on how long you want them to play independently, they can go through that paper pretty quick. I know my nephews do like three scribbles and they're like, we need new paper. And so that doesn't really enforce that independent play. Um, cars are really good. I know they're not completely open-ended, but they can drive them around. They can draw a mat. And just other things like that that they can manipulate or play with. There's a ton of fine motor toys that you can do. Those are usually the best things that they can string and might take a second are good ways. And so that's the second thing. Make sure you have your defined space and that you have toys that are open-ended that they can play with by themselves. And then the third thing is to know that play is a learned skill for our children. It's not something that they innately know how to do. So the first time our kids see a bucket of Legos, they have no idea what to do with them. So they're going to put them in their mouth or they're going to throw them because they don't know how to actually stack them. So to start this process, you're going to have to start out by playing with your child. So getting down on the floor with them, sitting at the table with them, showing them how those Legos connect and how you can stack with them. You can sort them by color show them how you can do those magnet tiles, play with them, teach them how the things work, teach them how to manipulate them, and then slowly over time, decrease your time with them. Take yourself away, um, you know, five minutes to three minutes to one minute or whatever might, that might look like depending on the age of your child, um, and then just encourage them to keep playing while mommy or daddy steps away for a minute. And that is leads us to the fourth step, which you may or may not need. So if you go through all of these things and your kids are do fine playing on their own, um, you might not need this step, but the fourth one is to set a timer. And this is for you if you really need the skill to be developed and, and it's not working on its own. And sometimes it's not because sometimes you get home from work and you give your children all their attention that they maybe don't meet that skill yet. They do fine at school. They haven't mastered it at home yet. And that's totally fine. But that one is where you might want to start setting a timer. So, you know, you're five years or you're four years old now, we're going to set the timer for five minutes and you're going to play with magnet tiles by yourself for five minutes. And then mom will come play magnet tiles with you. And so they know that they kind of start to get through that time place. And again, more likely than not, and it's not always going to be perfect, they're going to go longer than the timer. So sometimes you might set a vibrating timer and your phone's in your pocket. And so if they're playing fine by themselves, you can kind of let it go a little bit longer and you can scaffold that out. Otherwise you can say, oh great, the timer went off, mommy is going to play with you now, just so that they know that, um, you know, we are going to come back and work together and have that um, interactive play. But the idea here is that you are able to step away to cook dinner. You are able to step away to get on a Zoom meeting <laughs> um, to take a phone call and they're able to play independently. And so you just have to build that up. But if you need to set a timer, that's definitely something that you can do and have in your skill set. So, And then the last thing is to really encourage that independent yes. play. So we kind of were just talking about how do you back yourself away from it? Now it's kind of how do you initiate it? So, <laughs> yeah. so once your child kind of has the skill down, 
you know, if they come up to you and you're maybe again, cooking dinner, you know, and they're like, mommy, I want to play Legos. You can say, great, go to your room, get the Legos out um, and start building and mommy will come check in on you in a little bit, you know, and really encourage them to initiate it on their own. Um, and then if they do need you to step in and engage with them a little bit and then step back out and really reward them and praise them verbally for what they're doing. You know, use my son, William, like, William, I love, you know, how you're building that castle all by yourself. And I love how you're playing with your cars right now and really just pr give them that praise and that verbal rewards that they're looking for. So that is all we have for today. This was short and sweet, but I think it's something that's going to really help you guys at home, whether it's cooking dinner or attending those remote conference calls. So we will see you next week and thanks for tuning in.